this is a bit of a sour story, but let me know, let, let, let you know how this works. I was contacted by um, an American who has strong feelings for Australia. He's in, he's in Australia now, but obviously with his home country, and he, and he knew the Battle of Coral Sea, <clears throat> and he generated some interest with some uh, colleagues, and they already put up seven figures to build a an entire... Uh, memorial to the Battle of Coral Sea with audio-visual and, and, and all sorts of technical uh, shows, a bit like the modern war memorial down in Canberra now. Not just the rock, but a real experience of what happened and why it's so important. Contacted the Australian War Memorial and uh, and said, look, I've got a contact here. They've asked me to, to front this, this activity. Uh, can you help us out? We want to approach you and, and cooperate with you in, in the construction of this with the money is uh, is ready to go. We just need to sit down now start working out. Well, they were very keen, very briefly, and then inexplicably, the phone calls and emails stopped being replied to. Now, I can't imagine why that was. Because the money's there, all they need, they've got the enthusiasm, we weren't going to ask the Australian people for a cent, yeah. but this, this multimedia uh, memorial to the Battle of Coral Sea, a pivotal moment in Australian history, and the Australian War Memorial wasn't interested. Was it because of the guy fronting the, the, uh, the program? And I apologised to the people involved and said, look, I think, I think you've got the wrong guy here because... I think I've just pissed too many people off and they can't, they can't do it. They would rather deny the Australian people this gift of history because they're just churlish. Yeah. Now, I can't prove that, but my goodness me. That's, that's so the sad. quality That's the quality of the people in Canberra. Yeah, and for those of you that are saying Ricardo's a lying piece of crap that's lying through his teeth about this whole story, there was no one that was willing to put six figure, seven figures down for this memorial – I remember you telling me about this a year and a bit ago. There you go. In mid-2019, but I didn't know that the bastards in Canberra didn't follow through with it. Are you Correct. serious? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? So no. a, a Syrian can come to Australia and recognise the military history and recognise and be very angry that a, a death like a, a noble man like Andrew Robertson, who was in a very pivotal battle, I can recognise the importance of that. But the, the idiots in Canberra are that less Australian? Are you yes. serious? Are you they kidding are so me? They're so spiteful. They're spiteful and nasty, and if they were five-year-old children, you'd you'd give them a good talking to. You really would. My, my I mean, I won't, I won't let you say it, but uh, if it was my parent, they'd, they'd, they'd be working out which uh, which weapon to use. That, and it wouldn't be the wooden spoon; it might be the belt. That's it's 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 very. <sighs> so sorry to put a sour twist on on a uh, a. Um no, but it's in a brave sailors uh, memorial. So no, but look, you know what? This is this this show is not. That's what this show is all about. We're giving it to people straight, honestly. This is the what do you call it? This is the depth of the depravity. Is that how you put mm. it? <sighs> I'm very enraged by that. That's that's very frustrating. It like, is, and I, I, as I said, I, I rang them up, apologized, and said, "Look, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. They don't want to play." Yeah. God damn it! This not a cent from the Australian people. Yeah, all this money. Oh, they, 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 they can find all this money for this national debt that I'll be paying off for the rest of my life unless A1 gets in. Now we'll fix a national debt. That's not a problem. That, yeah. that hand grenade that you think that somebody's going to inherit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're good. Yeah. We're good. Anyway, getting back to Andrew Robertson, I wanted to highlight a section of his interview with John Anderson. Oh, that, terrific. That got, that got quite a few views, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. Sure. And it's, it's actually quite enlightening, guys. It's very enlightening. I had a chat... I may have failed to mention this, but this is actually John Anderson's father-in-law. That's why it was such a close, and he was almost a mentor for John as well. And that's why it was such a close um, thing. And I, I got on the phone with John um, a couple of days ago, as soon as I realized, and I passed my condolences on, because I had so much respect for this man. As a nation, and I know there are pockets of great poverty and so on, but as a nation, we become extremely wealthy. And as such... We're now 25 million people. When we were four and a half to five million, we took care of our defense. Now we're 25 million. We seem to think that we're all okay, that nobody, our distances are fine and there couldn't be a war and the trade will all solve all the issues and all these sorts of things. And uh, we haven't taken responsibility for our own defense. We're 25 million people among the wealthiest little countries in the world. We are surrounded by a large moat, but we've got to make sure that that moat, the island structures are all in our general area, that we help, we become great friends to, and that we can defend our own neck of the woods. 
and this requires fundamentally naval and air power, but it also requires a strong and mobile and highly effective army, and that's the ADF as a whole. But we have to wake up while there's still time. Uh, as you say, we are quite a wealthy country, but here's something that staggers people when I say it to them. Russia is seen as a global power. People are concerned about what Russia might do. They're aware that it's very powerful. The Australian economy is the same size as Russia's. No one sees us as a threat, and we don't want to be a threat. We simply want to be seen as people who will stand up for our values and play a constructive role if someone needs to enforce the peace. But it's an interesting point, isn't it, that uh, uh, we sometimes hear people say, oh, no, no, if anything nasty happens, we're not big enough to make a difference. When we were four and a half million people, we were able to build a second tier Navy and be massively instrumental in the outcome of the First World War on the battlefields. We celebrate that every year. Even in the Second War, when we finally got our act together, we played a critical role in a couple of the major battles of the Second World War. Now, there seems no excuse for us in an age when we can't assume that the superpower of the day, once it was Britain, now it's America, will be fully able to support us if something goes wrong, surely we ought to be able to step up and recognise our size, our wealth, and the desirability of standing for the freedoms that we think matter. I think it was Rommel, who was the Desert Fox, a German um, general in the First World War, who said, if I was to take hell, I'd use the Australians to take it and the New Zealanders to hold it. You know, that was when we were five million people. And yet, no, we shouldn't have a memorial. See, that's, I like John Anderson, but that's, we, that's why politicians are bad wartime leaders. He, he wants to be with his mate. What was the form of words he used? We don't want to see him a threat. Yes, we are supposed to be seen as a threat. That's exactly how you negotiate. Once again, grow up, kids. Mm. Negotiations between countries aren't done because it's in our mutual benefit. Negotiations are done because if you don't do business, you're going to lose. Mm. That's the real world. Yeah. This, this nonsense, we want to be seen as everyone's mate. Oh, grow up, mm. for God's sake. We need, and this is, you can check out A1 policy. There's, we are at war, point number one. We're already at war. China has won. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. So to pretend that we're not at war and, and, and time's running out, time ran out some time ago. You're about to be forcibly injected with, with, with vaccines made in China. Congratulations, or made somewhere else. That's right. We have, no, we have no capacity to produce our own vaccines. We have no capacity to produce our own military equipment. Our policy is to have three major primes producing military equipment for us. Our policy is to have our own design and manufacture of, of uh, computer chips because it's the equivalent of having gunpowder when the others didn't. Yeah. That's the power of the chip. We're, it's our policy to have sea, layer and special operations forces, space forces. We're going to have long-range capabilities and expeditionary capabilities so we can fly in, sail in, march in if we need to, do a job and get out. Nation building is out. Winning wars and killing bad guys is back in, in vogue. So the gay bar loiterers that are currently running the Defence Force will be out of a job very, very quickly because mm. we cannot afford to be undefended. For the first time in our history, we will, under an A1 government, be capable of defending ourselves independent of our neighbours, yeah. independent of the superpowers. Yeah. We have to stand up on our own two feet and act like grown-ups instead of saying, Daddy, can you come and help me, please? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but it's, that's, that moment has passed. Yeah. We need to be intimidating militarily. That's right. So people treat us with respect because that's all they understand. And once again, at the risk of repeating myself, if you take the Christian bit out of our Western democracy, the turn the other cheek and act of grace doesn't exist in the other religions. You take a step back, they take a step forward. That's right. I believe in a very muscular Christianity. Let's put it that way. And so, no, love John Anderson, that's fantastic, but he's so bloody wrong. We are not everybody's best mate, and that's why we've got China buying every freaking politician they can buy. That's why they've, been take, they've taken over Papua New Guinea, and I was there in 90 to 91, and the Chinese were in there buying up everything, and they're still doing it now. Yeah. And the Australian imbeciles would send their $300 million of untied aid to, to PNG, yeah. um, and that just went walkabout. Yeah. We got the, the island chain... Um, being bought up by China. We are at war. We have, we have yeah. corrupted and treasonous politicians selling us out at every moment. Yeah. We are at war. We have lost. It's time to fight back. Yeah. We are actually on the back foot. We have lost. Mm. 
So to say we have to be ready for China, oh, grow up. Mm. And this, this applies to Hasty and Molan and the other cowards in Canberra that will not speak. And they are cow- whatever they once were as officers, brave men, I don't doubt. But now you're nothing but cowards because you won't speak. You hedge. You pretend. It's almost like you took an oath to somebody else or to something else to conceal and never reveal. No, we have lost the war. Mm. They're just going to roll the, the military in after the fact. Yeah. They've done it economically. Yeah. And in, no. And in John's defence, I just want to make the point, this is a two-year-ago conversation, early 2019. I'd be very curious to hear what he's saying now. And I have had chats with John, and I don't, I don't reveal my private conversations. No, no, and don't expect you to, but bloody politicians is all I can say. No, absolutely. I totally agree. Bloody politicians. Maybe it is out of time. Maybe there was time. No. Time no two then. years ago, it was too late. Yeah. It's not like the world changed dramatically in the yeah. last two years. China has bought and paid for every politician for decades. Yeah. This, every, and I've said it before, say it again, uh, the new international economic order, implications for Australia, Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence, February 1980, did the report. Mm. Every Prime Minister, every leader of the opposition, every Senator and every member of the House of Representatives from all four major parties, Liberal, Labor, Nationals and Greens, have, have systematically betrayed us and sold us out to just about everybody. Mm. So this is not two, you know, two years, oh, it's just happened. Bullshit. Yeah. Mm. This has been happening for decades. And if they don't know, then they're imbeciles. And if they did know, then they're, tra- they're traitors. Mm. It's really straightforward, folks. I, I don't care how freaking polite you are. Mm. But this is treason. Mm. Fourth and fifth generational warfare, that's what we're looking at, guys. If you're not sure what that is, look it up, because what China's been doing, I have to take my hat off to them. They have done a phenomenal job, and they've been aided 